Hey guys, Mama Snark here. I'm gonna do a quick video on how I find the cheapest rates for a Disney vacation. I am not DVC owner. Um, I've never run at DVC points, although that is something I'm interested in doing at some point in time. We're not a wealthy household. We are a two parent, full time working household with two kids. Um, I just really like going to Disney. I have since I was a little kid, it's my happy place. So this is how I find the cheapest rates to be able to do it. Number one, for our bigger trips, I tend to plan at least a year out. That gives me a full year to save up, do a little side hustling, you know, kind of sell kids clothes and shoes around the house and things like that to be able to save up for it. But another way that I do it is just play around on the Disney website. I've never used a travel agent. Um, I have control issues, <laughs> number one. So using a travel agent just isn't for me because I like to have full control over my reservations. So basically I just input random dates into the Walt Disney World website. We are two adults, two children. Sometimes I'll do it with one adult and one kid if I'm gonna do a solo trip, like I'm gonna be doing with Man Cub here shortly. So basically you put in your dates, just kind of scroll around and see you know, which offer looks like something that you can actually do. So if you look here, 111 a night for a campsite versus 136 at All Star Sports, I personally would prefer to stay in a hotel because I am not a camping type person. We also do not live anywhere near Disney World or Disneyland. We're in Louisiana. So we do have to fly or drive, which that's not a drive I'm really excited to undertake with toddlers, or I guess they're preschoolers now. So for example, All-Star Sports, I do tend to stay more on the value resort side just because it is cheaper. And again, you know, we're not that well off. I'm not DVC. So staying the cheaper end is usually what happens. We did stay at Caribbean Beach for our first big trip because we had an extra year to plan for it due to COVID. We pushed our trip back for a year. We were originally going to stay at Pop, and Pop is where we ended up staying on this big trip that we did in November of 2022. So I picked Oster Sports. The first step is going to be pick your resort. And then if you scroll down here, standard room, right here, it says rate details. You're going to click that. And this is under the room only. Right here, you can see not a package. Make sure it's under room only. And then this pops up when you click rate details. And that's going to give me for that particular day and the few days around it. But then if you click right here where it says view rate calendar, it's going to pop up with a full year calendar as long as that full year is out. So then you can look at each night per month of the year, day of the week, and see if you book spring break week, which is right here this year, the 13th through the 17th, 228 a night, 185 a night, 197 a night versus first week of February, 132 on a weekend, 113 during the week. That's also another tip. If you have the PTO and you can swing it, is to stay during the weekdays. It tends to be cheaper than doing a weekend trip. Luckily, I have a job where I do earn quite a bit of PTO, so I am able to take off several times a year without any issue. But if not, you can still, you know, look at those weekend rates and do a long weekend trip if that's what works best for you and your family. So, you know, middle of July weekend is going to be 207. But this way you can look at the full year and kind of game plan and see what's going to be the cheapest time of year to visit for you. First week of September, end of August is going to be cheaper. End of October is not the cheapest, but it is on the cheaper end, as well as the end of November, which is what we did last year, because this is going to be Thanksgiving week, which is when a lot of kids have off of school and a lot of parents tend to have off of work as well. So that's when people tend to go because they already have the time off, whereas we were able to go here because our kids were still in preschool this year. So we weren't worried about them missing school and hubby and I were able to just take pay time off and do that. And then of course, Christmas week is going to run your highest rates. Another thing to do is always check the special offers. 
at the very bottom of the website, and I'll show you that tab in just a minute. But for instance, right now, the dates that I'm searching, which is around the time that I'm taking Man Cub, they have a save up to $400 room and ticket package offer, and you can click the offer details and, you know, kind of read minimum two nights, maximum 14 nights. It gives you the dates here that it's valid. So I was able to utilize this one. So package deal, I'll show you the differences. My internet will work. <laughs> so for a standard room a package deal, you're looking at 2675. We click that special offer, and that standard room is going to drop down to not a whole lot, but a little bit more. So, I mean, every cent counts. If you're staying at a deluxe or a moderate, that discount is going to be much more noticeable because you're paying more per room or for the room per night. Whereas at the value resorts, you're already kind of paying bottom of the barrel. But then you can select that and then alter your ticket package. So it's automatically going to give you like the most number of days for your tickets. If you're doing a room and ticket package, you have to do at least two park day tickets. Otherwise, you're going to have to do a room only package and then buy a park ticket separately and link that to your My Disney Experience account. So for Man Cub and I, I did a two day. This is for an extra adult and an extra child price. So you can do a long weekend with two park days, fly in one day, park day, park day, fly out the next day for a family of four for this price, which it's not cheap. I'm not even going to try to sugarcoat that. Disney is wildly expensive and it's priced out most American families, unfortunately. But if you stay at a value resort, which are really nice, you can keep it on that cheaper end of the budget. And then the other way I was showing you is if you click the special offers. And it'll give you a list of the current promotions that Disney has going on. Always check because sometimes that special promotion really isn't that good of a deal. For instance, the new one that they have coming out right now is you get a free, let's see, where is it? Oh, I don't even see it anymore. Oh, there it is. So for instance, the new one that has just come out is the Stay Play and Earn a Disney Dining Code. I've priced this just on a regular room and ticket rate, and it's actually a little bit more expensive, but you do get that free dining credit offer on a dining card. So it does even out because if you are planning on eating in the parks, then, you know, it, it kind of washes and you are saving a little bit. Personally, myself, I would prefer a package discount or a room-only discount. That way, I don't really feel stressed out into, or I guess, I don't feel kind of bullied into using Disney Dining. So if I wanted to do a grocery delivery order, which I have done before, and I'll link those two videos down below for you, and just bring snacks into the park and just kind of snack around here and there, that's going to be much cheaper overall for me and my family versus having to use that Disney Dining card and paying basically full price, if not a little bit more, for the promotion. So that's how I find my cheapest tickets and hotel offers. Um, another thing that I'm gonna be doing is staying at a Good Neighbor Hotel, which is the first time I've ever done that. And I'll have that whole vlog series with all the details coming out probably end of summer, beginning of summer, whenever I do that. So if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, Disney World Good Neighbor Hotels. So that's going to give you, these are going to be like your deluxe resorts, but if you click on the Good Neighbor Hotels, you do still get the early entry to the theme park. As much to my knowledge, most of them do have free shuttle transportation to the parks, though it's not going to be as good or reliable as a Disney bus transportation. So here you can click and browse the ones that are affiliated with Disney and get you that early entry discount, and it just popped up to the no, 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 let's see. Oh, that's not it. Disney Spring Area Hotels. Maybe that's it. Okay, so I was wrong. It wasn't the Good Neighbor Hotels. It's the Disney Spring Hotels. So this is a list based on, like, for instance, my family's criteria. And a friend and I are going to be staying at the Drury Plaza in May of 2023. 
And like I said, I'll have that whole series coming out with all the information because I've only ever stayed on Disney property. So I don't have all the answers right now, but these are more options to save a little bit of money. If you're staying at a, what they call like a partner hotel. Second way that I save money. And a lot of people are going to scoff at this. You can also use Google flight matrix. That's another one. But honestly, I have found that I cannot beat spirit prices. Like you just, you really can't beat it. So what I'll do is I'll go to the spirit website. I'll click in some random dates and I'll usually not always, but a lot of the times I might actually choose my hotel and Disney vacation dates based on flight prices. So as you can see, flights are stupid cheap and they've got different times here. They are non-stop flights. The ones that I look at, not the nine hour ones, but the one hour and 40 minutes, one hour and 36 minutes, non-stop for $39 per person. You only get a personal item per person, but if I'm only doing a long weekend trip or a quick getaway, that is more than enough. I have learned how to cram things into a backpack. <laughs> I'll also insert my packing videos for you to watch. So you can click on the rate details like I just did there and it'll give you a full calendar. And then you can look and see when they have the cheapest flights. So I might choose Wednesday through Saturday to save the most amount of money, or I might fly out on Saturday and come back on that Tuesday, just kind of depending on flight prices and what they have available. So recently for a trip in January to and from Orlando from New Orleans airport for my son and myself round trip, it was only $115 because we are only doing personal items. We are not going to be checking any bags and it's just him and I. So I was able to put, you know, the things that we needed in to two personal items. So always check the rate calendars. I have also heard that if you go to the airport and purchase your tickets at the ticket counters there versus doing it online, you do save a little bit more money. Unfortunately for us, the New Orleans airport is about an hour and a half or two hour drive from us. So that's not really saving much money if we have to drive all the way out there. So checking the flight calendar is another way that I save money. And I'll show you, let's see, I'll show you here if I just went ahead and clicked that one coming back 77, 78. And that's with all the tax and everything included for one person to fly to and from New Orleans to Orlando. You really can't beat that combined with that price of $1,500. This would be multiplied by four if it was going to be for my entire family versus just myself. So that's always something to keep in mind. But this is how I find the cheapest deals on flying to Disney World and having a vacation. Um, I do year, use mirrors and or sunshine flyer to get there because I typically am flying with a child if I'm doing, you know, a solo trip with a kid or, you know, hubby and I are flying with kids. I don't want to have to search for an Uber with a car seat. I am also very much not going to, oh, that's not it. I'm very much not going to haul a car seat around if I'm just going to Disney World because I'm not going to need it on Disney property. We'll use Disney transportation and you don't, you literally cannot have a car seat like on the buses and stuff. So it makes more sense for us to just book this and do the motor coach versus, and this is about the same price as Sunshine Flyer. They were literally within like $2 of each other. Um, I've done Mirrors Connect, no frills, did the job though. I'm trying Sunshine Flyer here coming up and I'll compare the two and let you know which one I like the best. But this is the cheapest uh, option versus trying to find an Uber or a Lyft that number one can fit all of us and number two has car seats because I've heard that that can be far and few between to find one and also the rates are much higher because they are more liable if they have a car seat and you're relying on that car seat to be safe. So this is what I found to be the best value to get to and from your Disney hotel. You will have to share with other resorts more than likely they're going to have a few more stops either on the way there or on the way to your resort to drop off other hotel guests at various hotels. But 
again, it's cheaper and it's safe and I don't need to lug a car seat around with my two kids. So this is how I afford Disney vacations with my family and or myself and or friends and other things like that. I just wanted to give you guys the best option for booking the cheapest vacation package that you can potentially get on a Walt Disney World resort vacation because it ain't cheap y'all and it's only getting worse and more expensive and that hurts my soul because Disney is my happy place but as long as I can find those cheap airfares right here and I can find the cheaper you know hotel rooms and things and like I said as of now my kids are not in school so I am able to have a little bit of wiggle room and to go while kids are in school without worrying about that right now. <laughs> I'll let you know whenever that changes. So that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you give this video a like and a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and follow along for many more Disney World tips and tricks for with taking preschoolers and kids to Disney World and just traveling with kids and preschoolers in general and different activities and things to do with your kids. Thank you guys for watching. Bye guys.